Hi, welcome to this video. We are the Proclaimers. Our best of's coming out uh, at the beginning of July, and we're going to talk about some of the songs. Through the Hour Away uh, was the very first single we put out uh, in 1987 from the very first record. This is a story. And it was a song written in response to coming down to record companies uh, during the kind of mid-1980s, come down an overnight bus from Edinburgh when we were unemployed and most of the time you wouldn't get to see anybody but sometimes you did and we'd get to see sometimes record company people or publishers and the ones who, got, who gave us an interview obviously were slightly interested but often they would say that they liked the songs but the fact that they were being sung in a Scottish accent was going to limit the appeal. Uh, and if maybe we changed the accent and we sang it in another accent, then maybe we'd get a deal. And we felt that we were singing songs about our own experience and we had to do that in our own accent. And so Through the ROE was written about those kind of attitudes and it became the very first single. And I think it got to number 118, which probably proved the point of the record companies. But we still still sing the song so that proves the quality of the song, I think. I'm going to be, uh, it's one of these things that's become much bigger than The Proclaimers. That's the truth. It's, it's one of those songs. I don't know how, how it happens like that sometimes with, with records, uh, that they just go on and on and you come back and get around again uh, and different generations discover them and uh, enjoy them. It was written in about 45, 50 minutes uh, once when I was sitting waiting to go up to Aberdeen, getting a lift up to Aberdeen to, to a show up there, uh, when we were promoting the very first acoustic album. And I had about an hour to spare and I was sitting at the electric piano and I just came up with this. And it was, I think, virtually the whole song, certainly the whole tune, I think nearly all the lyrics was done by the time the, the van came to pick us up. And we started doing it live before we ever recorded it and it went down really well. Uh, and then when we did record it, we knew it would be the first song on the record and we knew it would be the first single from that record. Uh, and we thought that if it got some play then it, it could do quite well, but we never really expected it to do what it did. Fantastic playing on the, particularly the drumming and the guitar part with Jerry Donahue. It nails it really, I think that's the signature to it, is the, the guitar intro and uh, the kind of marching beat running all the way through. Letter from America was a song written, one of the earlier songs that we did, uh, written in the flat that we lived in in Edinburgh at the time. I suppose it's really comparing two periods, uh, two periods of Scottish history with the clearances off the land for people to uh, people to make way for sheep that happened in the, in the 19th century to what happened in the late 70s and early 80s in Scotland and England also where people were leaving to get work uh, because they couldn't get here because there was so much unemployment. Um, I suppose it's I suppose it is an emotional song. It's a song that's probably dated somewhat but then again, given the, the conditions that prevail at the moment with uh, people struggling to get work and again having to consider leaving and going somewhere else for it, um, there's probably some elements to it now. A song that we do all the time, uh, it pr pretty much every performance we do, of any length we do this song. Role Model, uh, I think, was one of the most fun uh, things that we ever recorded. Uh, we did we did it on the, the album we did with Edwin Collins and uh, it was a very, very enjoyable experience, two or three weeks uh, in, in Edwin's studio in, in West Hampstead. And Role Model is really a, an affectionate look at multitasking star females of the 20th and 20th, 21st centuries. And it is meant to be an amusing song. We do it, I think it's one of these ones that uh, when we do it acoustically, it probably comes over be better than it does with a band because the words are very quick fire and you've got to kind of pick up the, the, the humour and the lyric. But uh, Charlie and I do this one acoustically a lot and we do still occasionally do it with a band 
and um, it's one we're very proud of. One of these songs where pacing is very important because if you do it too fast, you kind of miss the words a wee bit, or Craig can do words quite a lot. So it's how you pace it and make sure you listen to the words. S O R R Y, sorry, was written in response to the number of um, journalists, commentators, columnists who were cheating us into the Iraq war, uh, thinking it was all going to be over in five minutes, believing the myth of weapons of mass destruction, believing the lies, and then when it turned out there were no weapons of mass destruction and what we did there and what is still going on there uh, blame other people because they couldn't see what was in front of them and it's uh, it's, it's it's probably applicable to many other uh, situations where countries have gone to war but um, it does amaze me that people who were so gung-ho so many people who were so gung-ho for Iraq now are so silent about it when they always take the view that people on the left who they say never want to go to war under any set of circumstances that when they are proved wrong, as they would say it, then invite them to, to apologise. Let me get Spinning Around in the Air was another song which, which kind of felt like it, it wrote itself. Uh, it is, it is, sounds like a nonsense song and it probably is almost a nonsense song, but it is, there is some theme around it. The theme is the meaning of words and not quite being able to get the best phrase for a situation that you're in. And uh, it was one where, when I first played it to Charlie, I thought I thought he would either really love it or he'd hate it and we'd think, well, we won't do it. But he really liked it and we did it. And we did a, 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 a video directed by Mark Lucas, which was uh, very, very much, very enjoyable to do over a day or so in Glasgow. In Recognition is a song I knew when I first got the first few lines that we definitely would have to do it because I'd never he heard a song about that subject. The subject matter is, it is about the honour system in Britain and uh, the contempt that Chad and I have for it. But it's more about the people who say they'd never take an honour. Pop stars, politicians, actors, entertainers, artists, who 20 years later you find in the birthday honours or the New Year's honours that they've taken one and it happens every time. It happened last week with a couple of names I won't mention now where you, you look down on this list and you go, surely to God they are not taking an honour. And they are. Uh, and the song is really about people who say they will never take it, they're opposed to the honour system. And then 20, 25 years later, they get bought off. Wait a moment yet, have a cigarette. Just Look Now, I think, was one of my favourite songs that we've done in the last sort of 20 years, really. Um, I suppose it's, it, to some degree it's looking back at one's own life uh, and what happened uh, to, to, to oneself uh, and when, you know, in, in youth and comparing it to what's happening now to a lot of you know, things that change and yet they don't change. Um, I suppose there's a degree of, of sadness in it, a strong degree of sadness in it, which I think was almost palpable when we were recording it and that's, I think that's quite unusual for us. You know? I remember when we did the song, when we the, the, the take that we used, I had to sort of excuse myself and go outside for a couple of minutes because it was it was quite overwhelming doing it. It doesn't come. I don't think any of our songs are deeply sad, really, but there was certainly a feeling in the room when we were doing that. And I think the band at the time, Gary John and uh, Ross and all the guys that were working on it, really caught the feeling of of what we we're trying to trying to say in the song. Sunshine and Leith. Um, was written over a long period of time. I had the tune for the song, I had the whole tune, uh, including the, the um, break, instrumental break, for maybe about a year or 18 months. And I couldn't, I knew it was a very strong melody and I, I couldn't get the first couple of lines which set you off. 
uh, and then one time we were doing promotion in London and we were flying up from Heathrow and we flew in uh, over Edinburgh, over the Firth of Forth and the sun was glistening on Leith docks and it was always a, a bit of a, a joke and a myth saying sunny Leith because it was generally a bit sunnier than maybe Edinburgh was or Glasgow certainly. And I looked down and I thought, uh, just sunshine and Leith, that phrase came, came into my head and I knew we'd get it and I got lyric within a few days. Uh, I think it's probably the most popular song among the hardcore fans that we have uh, certainly live. I think Sunshine and Leith is, is probably the most complete song that we've done. Cap in Hand uh, is a song about our belief that Scotland should be an independent nation. Um, I think that uh, Scots often suffer from a severe lack of confidence and do when they are told that they can't do something uh, often will cower uh, and the song is basically saying that we can't believe that we are going cap in hand to Westminster uh, and asking for a proportion of what we already own as citizens of Scotland um, and why why aren't we an independent country? That's what it's saying. When we recorded the, the last record, um, Light Comedy, I think we recorded, we put 12 songs in it, I think we recorded about 16. There's a couple kept back for extra tracks, what used to be called B-sides. And we did Not Cynical, uh, and uh, Steve, had a, Steve Evans had a great arrangement to it. Mm. We really liked it, it was kind of very unusual. And we thought we knew we'd probably need a, a song, we knew we'd probably do a, a, a best of this year, and we would maybe need a, an extra song to put on it, something new. And Not Cynical seemed to fit the bill. I think it's a, it's, it's really a song about um, admiring people who've been around for a while who are not, don't become embittered and don't become cynical about life, despite maybe suffering the same kind of knocks and pain that, that the rest of us do and their ability to um, rise above that. Thank you very much for watching this and we hope you will perhaps subscribe to our channel. And you can order a record online here. Yeah.